is going on everybody? Welcome back for another movement. If you're new here, my name is Jared. I'm a graduate student studying music composition at the University of Northern Colorado. And today I'm gonna to be going through my top 10 tips for music majors. But if you're not a music major, you can learn a lot from this. Tip number one, schedule out regular practice times. Don't leave your practice times to the whims of the day-to-day. -day. Schedule them out and guard them like they're sacred unless you wanna end up in the fetal position in a practice room. Tip number two, you gotta treat yourself like an athlete because in essence, what we do is exactly the same as an athlete. We are training our bodies to do something that is incredibly specific. So you gotta take care of your body. That means you gotta eat well, that means you gotta get enough sleep, that means you gotta get some exercise. All right, tip number three is to have a day where you don't do music and try to have that kind of day every week. Now it seems counterintuitive, but even when we are pursuing our passion, we still need to take breaks from it because we can get exhausted and we can get burnt out. So have some days where you leave your instrument in the locker, you go for a hike, you go do something fun. Maybe you actually go to a concert instead of practicing to be in a concert. So have a day off every week. Tip number four, don't think that your music career starts when you graduate. It starts in college, it starts here and now. So start taking the opportunities that are presented to you that might seem a little out of the box or strange. It is really good to get those on your resume because the more performances you have on your resume, the better you're gonna do when you graduate, especially if you're trying to get into graduate schools or any kind of performance program. All right, so quick note about point four. My junior year of college, I really started to reach out to make some connections with people in the film industry. And one of those connections in particular has led to me being able to help out in two or three separate films by the time I had graduated by recording cello or typesetting scores, anything like that. So start networking now, you'll be thankful later. Tip number five, don't shortchange music history, music theory, counterpoint class, ed classes, or music tech classes. Those classes are gonna be some of the most important classes you take in your music degree. Believe me, those classes are gonna be responsible for a significant amount of your income as a musician. Tip number six, take a business class. To make it as a musician these days, you gotta be entrepreneurial. You gotta be comfortable with networking, comfortable with budgeting and stuff because as a musician, you are a business. So you gotta learn how to market yourself, how to network yourself and all these different things. So take a business class. Tip number seven, go to as many concerts as you can without killing yourself, both on campus and off campus. You're, you're a musician, so feed yourself with some good music. Tip number eight, when you practice, have breaks in your practice session. Never, ever practice for an hour straight. I practice for a max of 30 minutes straight before I took a break of five to 10 minutes because the amount of focus that you really need to get effective practice done is heads or tails higher than studying for music history or music theory, at least in my own opinion. So take the breaks you need to have those incredibly focused times of practice because those focused times of practice are gonna be way better than two hours of non-focused practice. Tip number nine, join as many ensembles as you can without killing yourself. This was huge for me. The amount of connections that I made in the ensembles I was in both in my focus area and out of my focus area have been incredibly valuable and are incredibly rewarding. So if you're an orchestra person, try joining a choir. If you're a choir person, try joining a chamber group or something like that. I was part of choirs, orchestras, and chamber groups in college. Loved them all and learned a ton from all of them. Quick note about that point that I made right there. Oh, I just touched my screen. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, anyways. So quick note about that. When I was in string orchestra, I met a guy who just contacted me and he wants me to orchestrate one of his pieces. I haven't seen this guy for a year, year and a half. But because of that connection we made in those ensembles, I now have a freelance gig that I'm getting paid for. Don't discount the connections that you're gonna make in ensembles. Okay, I'm gonna get close to the camera for the last one, number 10. Do not wrap up your sense of self-worth and your skill as a musician. Here's what's gonna happen if you're gonna do that. Your progress is gonna stop. Your joy in music is gonna go way down. Your mood is gonna be cloud nine and down in the muck, never consistent. A bad practice session is gonna ruin the rest of your day. A bad performance is gonna ruin the rest of your week. 
you're going to compare yourself to all the other music majors. It's going to be really hard to develop deep lasting friendships with music majors because you're always in competition with them and you are never going to be satisfied with your skill as a musician. Do not wrap up your sense of self-worth in your skill as a musician. And I remember this as a composition major because this is, it's so linked to who I am and how I communicate. When I had a bad composing session, the rest of the day was absolute garbage. I ended up writing an entire piece about this struggle. It's linked below if you want to listen to it, right? But you cannot wrap up your sense of self-worth in how well you did in that concert, how good your lesson was, right? Celebrate those things. Those are amazing when they go really well, but don't think that your value to your friends, to society, to the music college is wrapped up in how good you do as a musician. And it's really hard as a musician or anyone who has devoted countless hours to their craft since they were five or six years old, right? It's hard not to do that, but trust me, you can't do that. And that's why you gotta take entire days of not doing music. That's why you have to take care of yourself by getting enough sleep, by getting exercise, by pursuing hobbies, even though you are pursuing your passion, right? That's why all the other nine tips are so important. So seek out some great friendships, find some, some exercise activity that you like, whether it's running, climbing, joining a intramural sport, something like that. Find some things you can throw yourself into that are not related to music. For me, that's hiking, that's backpacking, all that stuff. And trust me, when I get back from doing those things, when I get back from our run, the amount of music I can write is just way farther than what I could have done if I hadn't done that. So again, do not wrap up your sense of self-worth in your skill as a musician. You are worth far more than that for the pure and simple fact that you are a human being and your relationship to your friends, to your family, to your siblings, to your parents, all of those there is so much more to who you are than just a musician. Bonus tip number 11, this is for all of you freshmen just starting out. It's gonna be really weird and you're gonna feel like you're an awful musician because you're probably a big fish in a small pond becoming a tiny little sardine in the ocean, right? That's what, what it feels like. But don't constantly compare yourself to all the other music majors, right? Comparison is a thief of all joy. Just put your head down, work at it, trust your teacher, it's going to be fine. I'll see you guys in the next one.